Good evening. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Good evening, everyone. Even before the events of last week, this year has challenged our resolve and produced a range of emotions. At the exact time in which we needed one another the most, we have been forced to stay apart, even from our closest friends and family. And just when we were finally beginning to see a light at the end of the coronavirus pandemic, the events of last week shocked and saddened us. Will not directly impact in our school district as Americans. Um, there's something's wrong. Something wrong with you? Oh, sorry. I I thought I was on mute. I'm trying oh. to use a headset here. It's not working. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Nick. Keep okay. going. Just when we were finally beginning to see a light at the end of the coronavirus pandemic, the events of last week shocked and saddened us. Will not directly impact in our school district. As Americans, we understand and empathize with the hurt that so many are feeling. Thus, we want to reach out with a collective hug for our district and the hope that better days are ahead. It is at times like this that we appreciate more than ever South Huntington's message of love, unity, diversity, and inclusivity. This community endures and it remains special even as the world around us sometimes seems like it's spinning out of control. And we hope that we can serve as a district, as a shining example for others, as we begin to heal and make sense of all that is happening. Tonight, we have our public hearing of the 2020-2021 budget. This will be our last word on the budget. This is a statutorily required process, and it is an opportunity for the public to be able to ask questions or make statements on the budget. We will first have a presentation from Dr. Bernardo, followed by questions and any answers. If you have a question or a comment on the budget, you can email the district at the previously provided email address. Before we begin, I just want to go over six important things relative to this year's budget and answer some of the questions that we've heard from the community. First, there is no in-person voting this year. No in-person voting. All voting will be conducted by absentee ballot only. The absentee ballots should have been already mailed to each of our registered and qualified voters in the district. This is not a South Huntington process. This was a state requirement, and we, were, we are following state law. Second, any ballots are due to be received by no later than June 9th at 5 p.m. Thus, they be, must be received in the district office by 5 p.m. in order to be counted. Third, please make sure that you sign the back of the envelope and complete all required information to have your ballot counted. Fourth, this process is governed by the governor's executive order, and nothing in the executive order provided for a revote. We have no information on the revote and no plan for one. Fifth, if you do not want to use the United States Postal System, we have provided a convenient locked drop box in the front of the district office. It is on the side of the building and it is a black lock box, so you can drop your ballot there at any time up until June 9th at 5 p.m. Sixth, your ballot has two propositions. As, excuse me, your ballot has one proposition for the school budget. It also has two candidates for two spots on the Board of Education and two candidates for two spots on the library board. That's a difference from this year. Our library trustees are included on the ballot. With those announcements, I will turn it over to Dr. Bernardo for our presentation. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for tuning in. 
Uh, tonight we're going to go through the, the typical and traditional budget hearing uh, presentation. We'll chat a little bit about it, and as always, um, answer any questions that might go through Laura McLean, or if you want to call, I've been getting um, emails and calls from people, and it's our pleasure to do so. So the this is the last step in the budget journey, which is a unique one. We've never really had a, a budget development process that began with one set of numbers, stopped as issues did due to the, the pandemic, um, and then got a completely new set of numbers, which are, are uh, at this point, best guess scenarios. So what do I mean by that? We, we, we got an original uh, set of state aid runs in the third week in January. Usually, our tradition is we go up about three or four or five hundred thousand dollars from that run, and this year we got those best set of runs and lost six thousand dollars from that run. So between the the three hundred thousand that typically goes up from the executive's proposal to the legislative proposal, and uh, the original six hundred thousand, we had about a nine hundred thousand dollar hole to fill in our planning. Um, so basically, this this first slide is important because I want to explain. I know I've done this before, and I apologize if it's repetitive, but it is. It, it warrants repeating. Essentially, the the governor this year has the unprecedented power of, or his people, on, of the unprecedented power of changing the state aid numbers. Uh, they say quarterly, but we expected the first set April thirtieth. It never came. Then we expected then the the April thirtieth was amended to May fifteenth, and that never came. So. Well, they say quarterly, I say when they choose. And the um, State House has the ability to change the state aid runs. Uh, I would say higher or lower, but I, I can't imagine it being higher, uh, although I'm certainly hoping. So, any time between now and December 30th. So, it's really important for us to understand that we're going to develop a budget, we developed a budget based on the numbers we think. We are being told now to, that um, if there is federal legislation that backfills the state treasuries, that we could be saved state aid wise to a certain degree. Otherwise, we can expect up to a 30% cut in state aid. So, anywhere between a 5% cut and a 30% cut, we have to pick a number. And um, what we did was, just so you know, we trimmed the original $900,000 from, from the executive proposal uh, and the legislative uh, hope. And then we trimmed another 10% of our foundation, which is $2.1 million. So we trimmed around 15%. We took the number of half, is the best I could um, figure to do for y'all. And we, we sliced it in half, and our hope is that any um, federal legislation that might happen backfills the rest into the state treasuries and will be. So we, are, we move that budget, we present the budget due tonight, which is about $40 million less than the original one we had planned uh, at the end of January. How did we do that? We brought in an auditor, and we asked the auditor to tell us um, what we will probably save from being closed. And um, we didn't want to do it ourselves because um, you need a fresh pair of eyes sometimes to look at something you've done over and over again. And that auditor told us we would save somewhere around six million dollars. That somewhere in that ballpark in the months we were closed. So what we did was we took we needed to make up three million in lost revenue. So the first thing we did um, is we took three million of that six and we made purchases for next year. Things that we have to purchase next year, things that are in the budget. Everything from uh, textbooks to rock salt, uh, those type of things. We made those purchases now with that savings. That allowed us to lower his next year number uh, by $3 million. And that got us to the point of even uh, with three, still $3 million left in the kit. So the, the budget we present tonight to you has $3 million of applied savings moved over and used for next year. We then had $1.1 million we had to use to ensure a Chromebook for every K-5 student. 
uh, for next year. Our current Chromebook situation, as you know, we um, supply 6 to 12 students, and the very strong recommendation out of Albany is, and, and the education committee in general is if this was to ever happen again, you really want, and God willing, it won't, you really want Chromebooks uh, in the hands of your K-5 students, and they would just be valuable to use instructionally. So what we did was, we took 1.1 million of that savings, and we used it uh, for those Chromebooks. And this was our one and only chance to ever make a purchase of that nature. And then, uh, so that left us with about $1.9 million left in this, this right hand, which I have the savings in. We then had a Maplewood boiler go, and um, we used 400000 for the Maplewood boiler, which brought us in this hand to $1.5 million in savings, which we are earmarking for an increase in unemployment insurance, which, as you know, the current circumstance, it's a pretty thing to do, and an increase in um, a pension reserve fund. So down the road, our pensions are attached to the stock market. If for some reason that stock market does not recover, a cushion so we don't have to pass that on to the taxpayer as an increased tax in a year or two. So that's the six. That's where it went. So we are able to bring you tonight's budget with that budget balance based on that. Two things could change that we seriously hope don't, um, but they could. We could present you this budget and next month we get, or two months or three months from now, get another million, two million or three million dollar cut um, in state aid. Again, there's a reason they don't typically provide the governor with that authority that he has now, because how do you account for that? You do the best you can at the time. They don't have a playbook for that. Um, happened once uh, in 19, it was 91 or 92, it was one of the first four or five years teaching as a, as a teacher, and I ended up moving districts over that because mid-year they cut electives. So, you know, that's always, uh, it's a very rare possibility that we hope doesn't happen. Um, and the second thing that could happen, which would be equally devastating um, to a district, is, 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 a, is a bill budget. And that's about $2.3 million that would have to come out of the coffers. So those are two things that we certainly will deal with if we have to. Um, but right now, we're able to balance things without any uh, reduction to programs or personnel. Are you done? Just before, uh, just before you... Okay, come on. Just before you move on, I just wanted to give the public the email address for comments. I left that out inadvertently before. If the public has any comments or questions on tonight's presentation, they can email us at boe at shufsd.org. So once again, the email address for any questions or comments is boe at shufsd.org. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. As we began this journey in January, we were sitting actually at a pretty good spot where our state aid was looking to be 38.2 million, and basically we're a shade under 3 million short now from that number where we stand right now today at 35.5 million. As you see on this slide, how 35.5 million in state aid, and as Dr. Bernardo had just mentioned, you know, there's also potential opportunities for more reductions throughout the calendar year that we need to be prepared for. Okay, fund balance. That basically is in our emergency savings um, that's in our operating budget each year, and we hope not to use it. We hope to carry it over for the following year. And this year, back in February, during our initial, we allocated 4.3 million, and due to the pandemic, reduction, we added 800000 from fund balance to make a total of $5.1 million that we're using in fund balance this year. All the savings that the district has are funds that are categorized as reserves. Uh, by statute, reserves are designated for specific purposes, and over the last several years, the district has allocated some of these reserves. Um, we're trying to reduce this dependency um, so, you know, from this year's current budget to next year's budget, we did reduce that dependency by about a half a million dollars. And it's, and it's something that we would look to try to replenish at the end of a, of a fiscal year uh, if there were funds available. In terms of the categories that we will be um, uh, applying uh, reserve funding for, the EBLR, that, that first acronym that you see, that stands for Employee Benefits Accrued Liability Reserve. 
Um, that's to do with things such as terminal leave when, when our employees retire. ERS is, is uh, for pension, as Dr. Bernardo and Dr. Lee mentioned, and also then the workers' compensation. Okay, this is a tax compliant budget that requires a simple majority to pass. Um, as I mentioned, our state aid was reduced at 35.5 million. And at the bottom right hand corner is a very important number. Our budget to budget increase is 0.75%. Now let me uh, make a let me make a clear point now because um, I know that there are those um, drawing a distinction between the budget to budget expenditure and you know don't believe the hype and all those other things. The the the, the in order to make this budget fit in a 2.3% tax cap, it required us to bring it down to a 0.75. Uh, under one budget to budget increase. What does that mean? So the point of total transparency. It means that the tax cap's 2.3%, that, that, that's a real number. That's the amount over last year's levy that we would ask the public in order to fund this budget to give us. So that's 2.3% over whatever the levy, whatever the total amount we collected last year. And that's to keep the budget at 0.75% uh, of an increased budget to budget. So that's what, it, because of the $3 million loss in state aid, that's why the number is, it's about the same budget. In fact, even if we have to go down a little bit more, it, it, it could be a 0.25 in that number, 0.25 to 0.75 range. It, it costs 2.3 uh, in a tax cap uh, to make that to make that a reality. So those are the difference between those two numbers and that makes up for the loss of state aid. Our estimated tax rate, next year is 2.93. Uh, in September, we'll get official notice of where that assessed value will be. It will be, it will be indicated. We did reduce our assessed valuation by 250000 and we feel that's kind of the sweet spot, and we have pretty good history using that number, and we hope to be in good shape moving forward. And that's a, there's another really important distinction. Um, four or five times today, I've got some really good questions over what the difference between the tax levy and the tax rate is. And this is a really important distinction because um, the, it, 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 again, it's total transparency. Essentially, a tax levy is the total amount of money that we can collect from a community to fund the budget. So um, if we had a tax levy in this room, right now sitting in our room, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. So if the total tax levy in this room was um, 11, we have 10 people I said, was $10,000. That's what our tax levy is, $10,000. It would be $1,000 each, and that would be our $10,000. If half the people moved out of this community, if this room was our community, and half of us who are homeowners moved out, our tax levy would remain $10,000, but our tax rate would have to be 2,000 each, to reach the same $10,000 levy. And that's the difference between the tax levy and the tax rate. So the tax levy is the overall, if, if everybody moved out but one person, every homeowner left this room but one person, that person's tax rate would be $10,000. If 10 more people moved in, and there were 20 people to divide the tax levy up, a tax, a tax rate would be $500. So tax levy is the total pool, and the tax rate is what it costs each homeowner to make that pool the fixed number. The tax levy is set by the state. Well, it's set by formula, but the state tells us it's okay to do that formula. They give us a formula, we have no discretion, we put in the numbers. That's the tax levy. Then what happens is the town has an assessor, and that assessor kind of decides what each house is worth, what each business is worth, and then decides how much each of those people contributes to, to the levy. So like for instance right now, I don't know if we get five or eight or whatever million dollars from the mall. If that mall was to leave, everyone's tax rate would go up, the levy would stay the same, but everyone's tax rate would love to make up for that lost revenue, which is why business can, can be real good for, for school districts. So that's the difference between the, the rate and the levy, just for the point of transparency. And I thought, I thought the levy question could only be 2%. How does it become higher or lower than that? So basically, we, I don't think we've ever been 2%. There are years we've been 0.01%, and the years we've been you know, 2.9%. And what happens is you're allowed certain exclusions 
um, to the levy. So they give you the formula, and then they say to you, are you doing any building next year? Are you doing any required maintenance on a boiler? And there are certain things they let you exclude from the levy, not too many. And that brings your, num your number up a tiny bit. So that squeezed our number up to, uh, what is it, 0.3 more? So to about 2.3. Um, you'll see, for instance, there's a neighboring district that um, is three or whatnot. And what happens is 1% above the 11 are these things called exclusions. And then there are also years exclusions work against you that you've done so much work, you fixed so many things, and you're out of exclusions. And then that was the year we had a 0.01% uh, levy. So it's, it's never the two, and they almost should have called it the tax cap, and not the 2% tax cap, because every year, I probably explain that to, to 20 or 30 people, and if it's under two, they believe me, and if it's over two, they don't. You know, and, and, and so you try to show that it's a tough thing. The, the name itself, that's what it's called. We don't call it that. But the state called it a 2% tax cap, and, and that's how that's arranged. I have on occasion gone through the formula with probably, there are like one or two race souls a year, and we kind of sit down, and, and uh, only because I actually find it interesting, not because of hobbies. And uh, so, but it actually is interesting to go through and see how they come up with the formula. Okay, on the next slide here, you basically see what our operating budget is this year for 1920, and you see what it will be uh, for 2021, and the change is of 1.3 million, and as I stated earlier, it is a 0.75 budget to budget increase. So the next slide um, is incredibly challenging to do, and I say that because I was I operated once as a school administrator, once as a principal, one year, uh, 33 years I operate on a contingency budget. Contingency budget means your budgets fail. And what the state tells you at that point is your budget has failed, and you are allowed to do only things which are absolutely necessary to health and safety, and nothing more than you did last year. So essentially, if our budget was to fail, we would, um, be allowed to raise the tax levy no more than last year's number. So essentially your tax levy is frozen at zero. So if last year we were allowed to levy, I think it was 117 million in change from the public, that's the exact number this year. Not up, not down. Um, so any costs, any increases in anything, from fuel oil to busing to uh, pensions, anything else, they have to be absorbed through the district. In other words, you have to take them from other places. There are also other things that a contingency budget does that we'll talk about. In our case, we would be absorbing close to two and a half million dollars would have to come out of our budget. So, um, you know, that's what is at stake with a with a um, you know a, a, a budget vote. And certain things the state tells you you can and can't do, and we'll talk about those in a moment. But those are really less important than what we have to do to get to the two point five million. Basically, um, we kind of showed before how we got to the three million um, with applied savings. We're, we're, we're out of those tricks. In other words, and I don't mean tricks in a bad way, they're a good thing, right? To be able to get that budget down uh, for the community. But th those are done. Uh, so the efficiency has been raised, and the real way to get to 2.3 to 4 or 5 million uh, is through programs. Busing cannot be touched in a contingency budget. So, um, Busing, which um, we're trying to work now to find a company, as you know, those can't be touched. What can be touched is extracurricular activities, salaries, and programs. And um, that way, now salaries are contractual. So unless a group is up for negotiation, those salaries are obligated and pensions are obligated to set too. So ultimately, what happens is their personnel costs. You know, when I lived as a principal on um, on contingency, there were. Tremendous personnel cuts, and, and two things get affected. Um, really, offerings and class size. What you can offer at the secondary level gets impacted. You start to cut down on your electives and go to your more uh, required classes, and at the elementary level, class size. That, that That's a reality. And, and the reason I say this is a challenging discussion is because in eight years, we've never really had this discussion, and you feel like if you're doing it, you're, you're being negative, and that's not the, the goal at all. But I had someone say to me today, very honestly, um, that they didn't think I was 
being blunt enough about the contingency budget, and it's probably not my my uh, personality to be blunt, and, and so you know I took I took that criticism as honesty, and, and that's what a contingency budget is. I had someone else say to me, "We know you guys will figure something out." While that's flattering, um, it, there's nothing to figure out. That first million, we, you know, three million we we're able to figure out, but there's nothing to figure out. In other words, the way you close a two point three, four, or five million dollar gap. Uh, you know, basically personnel. Then there are things you can't do um, in, a, in a contingency budget. For example, if you like it or not, I mean, the year we were on a contingency budget as a principal, the law wouldn't even let us give someone an agenda because, nope, you know, people have to pay for their agenda. The law wouldn't then give us a workbook, a science workbook. No, anything you use has to be um, being able to be returned and not consumed so people can write their workbooks. You can't order Chromebooks, you can't order projectors, you can't order smartboards, you can't order computers. In other words, the, the answer is, look, you can't take trips out of state, you know, student trips. So the answer is that they do what you have and do the right thing by your kids, of course, safety-wise. Um, and so that's, uh, uh, those are the contingency parameters that, again, I've never really shared with you um, to this degree in these years, but I am obligated to share it. So that's where we'd be with the contingency budget. I, I believe in this community and, and believe that they will vote. Um, and uh, you all have ballot homes, so certainly we leave that in the voters' hands. Um, and that's the reality of that. Uh, that. Uh, your absentee ballots are home to you. It is really important that you get them back to us. They have to be here um, by June 9th, correct, Lord? Now, if for any reason you're worried about the mail, um, in other words, if it gets close and you're worried about the mail, I know in my house, we just got off from my district, and I, I feared that it went to that top of the microwave, which is like the black hole of, of documents in my house, that, you know, two months later we say, whose call registration is this on the top of the microwave? Um, so if the house is anything like mine, I'm sure I'll be using the drop box in my district, you know, at 3 o'clock that day, um, because we put it up there, we've all guaranteed that we're going to take care of it, and I have a lot of uh, adult kids in my house, and, and I'm going to be dropping all off. So we do have a lockbox out front. You are welcome to use that. You don't even have to wait to use it if you choose. Um, in terms of the signature at the back of the envelope, that's just the state requirement. I had someone say to me that I put that in too, so I know how people voted. And I, I, I wish I could tell you that Albany listens to me. Um, but if anyone in Albany was listening to me, there'd be some different uh, decisions made there on a, on a daily basis. So I will tell you that um, you know that that that's a state. That, that's part of the voting laws, and, and they're really above my pay rate. But I will tell you that um, do not feel in any way, shape, or form that however you vote is a reflection on any, any, anyone or anything. That's not how we operate. We open the ballots. Laura puts them at the envelope to the side, and she, we do not. First of all, we don't. You know, administrators don't go in, uh, and, and the people that do that, we don't correlate. We don't look. Um, I hope you trust, trust us, me enough to know that. So um, please don't feel that way. And um, what you do is your family's choice. Um, that's it. And with that, I will uh, entertain questions. There are no questions. Well, please, please, please call me. Call Joe. Call Vito. Call April. Call any of us. Uh, John Murphy's here with us. The whole team's here. Call me. Um, I used to be able to say I'll come by the house even and talk about it if you want, but I know I'm not allowed inside now because of, uh, of, of, of all the restrictions. But I would actually talk to anyone anytime, and I don't take any of your questions personally. So please don't feel that. Okay. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mr. Does the board have any uh, questions or comments? I have a couple of concluding thoughts on the budget. Does anyone have any thoughts? Okay. Once again, uh, if you want to email us, the email address is boe at shufsd.org. Um, this was a unique budget process, and we always like to present calmness to the community and assure you that everything's going to be okay. But we have not seen a year quite like this in at least a decade. And even in those years, we knew what our state aid was going to be. So we've never had this kind of uncertainty before. And schools are facing, not just South Huntington, all schools are facing an existential threat this year. Uh, you might have seen that we don't have a bus contract right now because our bus contract went out of business. That will surely mean a cost increase. 
we are going to have to spend money on social distancing. It could be substantial to purchase thermal temperature checks. We will face rising pension costs. And last but certainly not least and most significantly will be the loss of additional state aid. We've already lost state aid, gone back to where we were last year. And when your state aid is flat and your costs rise, despite your best efforts to control them, there's just some things that are unavoidable that already puts you in a hole. And when we're talking about potential cuts of three to four more times before we even get through half of the academic year, that's something that nobody's faced before. My predecessor talked about mid-year cuts that we faced about 15, maybe 15 to 20 years ago. And those were dramatic and took years to overcome. Here we could be talking about four cuts in the middle of the year. That's something no district has ever faced before. So these are challenging times, and we just want to you know, make clear that our, our calmness does not necessarily reflect the the urgency and the concern that we have with respect to this particular budget process. There are um, a couple of things working in our favor. Next year is a very good year uh, salary and benefit lives for us in that our teaching staff, which is 550 members, makes up the bulk of our staff, their, um, by contract, fortunately, their step increase is uh, delayed till 2021. So we got some real uh, benefit there, which is wonderful. And then I know that there are always talk over uh, salaries, and I know one of the rumors circulating one of the sites is that, uh, that somehow I made four hundred eighty thousand dollars or some ridiculous number like that. Um, a, that's not true. B, the line that someone is reading to you uh, <laughs> is all of the executive office functions in the school district, from the clerk to the secretaries to the copy machines and whatnot. Uh, I rest assured that's not a salary increase. Um, additionally, I hope you know me well enough to know that when this difference in a jam like this, I would never ask for or accept the raise. So, um, you know, let me just go right out and, and, and say that very clearly, very publicly right now. So please don't make that, uh, that little bit of misinformation in any way, shape, or form. I think I can't clear that up for anybody else. I can certainly clear it up for myself. Uh, and that is important to understand that uh, we're in a very good year salary and benefit wise. That, that, that's a staff really good year. So, some real uh, prior partnerships and prior relationships have put us. That's one thing really working in our favor this year. Thank you, Dr. Dyer. Thank you for your, your excellent leadership this year and throughout the years. So, we need some good news now. And, uh, we need to bring up the mood. And this year, we have a record number of students who satisfy the rigorous academic qualifications to make the principal's list. Qualifying for the principal's list means you have to demonstrate academic excellence throughout your time at Wallowin High School. It requires intelligence, commitment, strength of mind, plenty of hard work, and a lot of late nights. This record number of honorees sets the class of 2020 apart from its predecessors. But even more, during this difficult time, your grace, class, and maturity speaks volumes about your character and your values. On behalf of the Board of Education, I want to thank you for representing the high school, the school district, and the community so admirably during the last four years, and especially during the past few months. These years have prepared you well for the challenges ahead, and I know that much success lies in your future. And without further ado, we will turn it over to our Walton High School principal, Mr. John Murphy. Thank you, Mr. Ciapetta. Dr. Bernardo, the entire Board of Education, as well as our district office personnel. Hello and welcome to our first ever Principals List virtual celebration, acknowledging and identifying students for their academic accomplishments over the course of their four years at high school. I must I must say this year in particular has truly been a memorable year. While the coronavirus has definitely changed the face of education and social interaction, not allowing to celebrate the accolades of these individuals in person, it has also given rise to the largest number of principal recipients ever. Over 120 students will be adorned in the South Cafeteria on the wall, making this great achieving this great accomplishment. 
I have been blessed to be able to speak at this event and recognize our outstanding students and their parents for all their hard work and academic achievements. One of my favorite aspects of this award ceremony is the opportunity to acknowledge these talents, which is usually in public, but will now be shared with everyone in our South Huntington community on a virtual format. It has been my absolute privilege to get to know these students over the course of these four years and have seen firsthand the sacrifices, the sacrifices they have made to ensure their success. Being able to grow with students we're about to honor will be the highlight of my career. These students encompass all walks of life here at Wall Women and are the best and brightest that we have to offer. These students represent athletics, fine arts, and academics alike and give us hope that the future is bright. Ceremonies such as these pay tribute to those efforts and give us a chance to say thank you. Thank you for never quitting on yourself. Thank you for giving us the chance to watch you grow and mature. And thank you for never settling, for putting in those long hours. And thank you for making our school and our community such a wonderful place to live and work. That is really what this celebration is about. We're celebrating not only the fruits of academic excellence, but the road that led us to those successes. While those successes are tremendous, none of them could have been accomplished without the support of your loved ones. I want to personally thank the parents who have provided these students the ability to become the success stories we're talking about today. Individually and collectively, the students we honor today personify the ideals and traits taught to them here at South Huntington. That is to make the world a better place through our ideas, our innovations, and more importantly, our engagement. During the current state of economic and social affairs, this could not be truer. The events of this year, with the interruption of a regular school setting, have truly taught the class of 2020 resiliency beyond their years. These fine young men and women have learned how to overcome adversity and remain resolute in their goals no matter what obstacles confront them. I just want to say congratulations to all our honorees before we start, and best wishes for much continued success. Now I begin the slideshow. Heather Abeni, proud parents John and Mary. Her academic honors include, she is a Sacred Heart President's Excellent Award recipient. She is a Sacred Heart Thomas More Honors Scholarship recipient. She is also a Sacred Heart Thomas More Honors Program. Her extracurricular activities include, she was a member of the Girls Varsity Soccer Team, the National Honor Society, and the Ambassador Club. Heather will be attending Sacred Heart University in the fall. Elman Aparicio, proud parents Elman and Levis. His academic honors include, he is a member of the National Honor Society, the National Business Honor Society, and the National Scholar Society. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the Varsity Track Team, as well as the Latino Heritage Club. Elman will be attending Farmingdale State College in the fall. Nicholas Arthur, proud parents, Grant and Suzanne. His academic honors include, he is an ACT SAT scholar. He is a recipient of the Pegasus Gold Scholarship for non-Florida residents, as well as a Wildcat Hero for boys cross country. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the varsity cross country, winter, and spring track. He will be attending the University of Central Florida. Edward Backer, proud parents, Franz and Kathleen. His academic honors include, he is an RIT Presidential Scholarship Award recipient. He attained high honor roll as well as the Triple C Award. His extracurricular activities are, he is a member of the Boys Varsity Tennis Team. He is also an audio-visual department at Old Westbury Adventist Church member, as well as he enjoys baking. He will be attending Rochester Institute of Technology. Amelia Bernatonite, proud parent Asta. Her academic honors include she is a Carleton University Entrance Scholarship Award recipient. She attained Student of the Month in Art, as well as achieving high honor roll. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Art Honor Society. She tutors students in art and is a former leadership member. She will be attending Carleton University in the fall. 
Nathan Blank. Proud parents, Dan and Elsa. His academic honors include, he is a Merit Scholarship SUNY Albany School of Business recipient. He is also a member of the National Honor Society. His extracurricular activities include, he is the co-president of DECA, the co-president of the Ambassadors Club, as well as a member of the National English Honor Society. Nathan will be attending the University of Albany School of Business in the fall. Nina Blankson, proud parent Gloria. Her academic honors include, she achieved Student of the Month in English and Math, and achieved multiple merit scholarships. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Business Club in Ghana, and was appointed to the class representative in Ghana. She will be attending Mercy College in the fall. Shauna Bonalavri, proud parents Valerie. Her academic honors include, she, wore, she was awarded the Silver Award in a National French Contest. She achieved high honor roll, as well as Student of the Month. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the World Language Honor Society. She will be attending Suffolk County Community College in the fall. Isabella Bonvinson, proud parents, David and Natalie. Her academic honors include, she is an AP scholar. She is a member of the National Honor Society as well as the World Language Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is the historian of the Girls Leaders Organization. She is a member of the Ambassadors Club as well as varsity track. She will be attending University of Delaware in the fall. Jack Brady, proud parents, Dennis and Lisa. Jack's academic, academic honors include, he is a member of the National Honor Society, the National Business Honor Society, and attained high honor roll. His extracurricular activities include, he is the editor of the video yearbook, he was a member of the varsity bowling team, as well as virtual enterprise. Jack will be attending SUNY Maritime College in the fall. Patrick Bresden, proud parents, William and Nancy. His academic honors include, he is a member of the National Honor Society, the National Business Honor Society, as well as receiving the Student Leadership Award. His extracurricular activities include, he is the Senior Class Secretary of Student Government. He was also a member of the Varsity Winter Track and Field, as well as Spring Track and Field. Patrick will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Matthew Calandra. Proud parents, Stephen and Karen. His academic honors include, he is an AP Scholar with Honors. He, was, he received the Academic All-County Award from Suffolk County Soccer Association, as well as receiving Minds in Motion Scholar Athlete Award. His extracurricular activities include, he was a member of the varsity soccer team. He is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as president of the Playlist Club. He will be attending Boston College in the fall. Annalise Campo, proud parent Julie. Her academic honors include, she is a Geneseo, Geneseo Merit Scholarship Award recipient. She is a member of the National Honor Society as well as the English National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she was the captain of the varsity field hockey team. She was a member of the robotics club as well as chamber orchestra. She will be attending SUNY Geneseo in the fall. Samantha Carey, proud parents, Phil and Laura. Her academic honors include, she is a University of Maryland Presidential Journalism Scholarship Award recipient. She attained the New York State Seal of Biliteracy, as well as Secretary of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is Secretary of the International Thespian Society. She was a nominee and attendee of the American Legion Auxiliary Empire's Girl State, as well as a camp counselor for Vacation Bible School. Samantha will be attending the University of Maryland College Park in the fall. Jessica Castagna, proud parents, John and Lisa. 
Her academic honors include, she is an Academic Excellence Scholarship Award recipient for the University of Pennsylvania Westchester. She is also a member of the National Honor Society and the English National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she, is a, she was a member of the Girls Varsity Cross Country Team, she was secretary of the Ambassadors Club, and a member of the Pitt Orchestra. She will be attending Westchester University of Pennsylvania in the fall. Juliana Chiraboga, proud parents Diego and Joanna. Her academic honors include, she is a Ryder University Presidential Scholarship Award recipient. She is also a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she was president of the Walt Whitman Corral. She was a member of the International Thespian Society, as well as captain of the Walt Whitman Varsity Gymnastics Team. She will be attending Ryder University in the fall. Isa Chowdhury, proud parents Muhammad and Nagat. Her academic honors include, she is the president of the World Language Honor Society. She is an AP Capstone Diploma recipient, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a senior class officer and a member of the Pre-Law Club. She will be attending Hunter College in the fall. Kayla Call. Proud parents, John and Nancy. Her academic honors include, she is a University of Delaware Trustee Scholarship Award recipient. She is a Delaware Epsilon Rho Scholarship Award recipient, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Interact Club. She is also a member of the Jan Martin Dance Studio Competition Team, and a member as a teacher assistant of the St. Matthew's Roman Catholic Church. She will be attending the University of Delaware in the fall. Kevin Kozar, proud parents, Glenn and Kara. His academic honors include, he is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as attaining high honor roll. His extracurricular activities include, he's the treasurer of the National Art Honor Society, as well as a member of the National English Honor Society. He will be attending SUNY New Paltz in the fall. Jillian Crowley, proud parents, Kurt and Sue. Her academic honors include, she is an AP scholar. She is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as an, an athlete award winner for the Minds in Motion Scholar Athlete Award. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the varsity tennis, fencing, and softball team. She is a first degree black belt in jujitsu, as well as volunteers at horse ability. She will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Olivia Consolo, proud parents, John and Maria. Her academic honors include, she is a Presidential Scholarship at Roger Williams University Award recipient. She is a member of the National Honor Society as well as the World Language Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the varsity tennis team, she is also a member of the Ambassadors Club and a photography assistant. She will be attending Roger Williams University in the fall. Caitlin Demore, proud parents, Joseph and Christine. Her academic honors include, she is a University of Delaware Trustee Scholarship Award recipient. She is also a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member, member of the Huntington Youth Court, as well as attaining high honor roll. She will be attending the University of Delaware in the fall. Haley Dearborn, proud parents, Todd and Melissa. Her academic honors include, she is a University of Delaware Trustee Scholarship Award recipient. She is an AP Scholar, as well as an ACT SAT Scholar. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a U.S. Figure Skating Association Learn to Skate coach. She also is a U.S. Figure Skating Association Graduating Seniors Silver Level Award Winners recipient, as well as a member of our chamber orchestra. She will be attending University of Delaware Honors College in the fall. Nicholas DiGatano, proud parents, Brian and Michelle. 
His academic honors include, he is the CEO of Virtual Enterprise Company. He is also a member of the National Business Honor Society and the National Honor Society. His extracurricular activities include, he is a Section 11 Cross Country Qualifier and Newsday Diamond Gem Award recipient. He is a three-sport athlete for all four years, varsity cross country, basketball, bowling, and baseball. He is also a nominee and attendee of the American Legion Auxiliary Boys State. He will be attending the University of Tennessee in the fall. Corinne DeRosa, proud parents, Gabe and Denise. Her academic honors include, she is a Belmont University Merit Scholarship Award recipient. She is a D'Addario Foundation Music Excellence Scholarship Award recipient, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a Tri-M Music Honor Society member, as well as a member of the Jazz Band. She will be attending Belmont University in the fall. Alexander DiLorenzo, proud parents, Tom and Carolyn. His academic honors include, he is, he is a scholar athlete awarded by the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame. He is a top 100 Long Island football player award winner, as well as attaining high honor roll. His extracurricular activities include, he was a varsity football star, all county and all division. He was also a member of the varsity lacrosse team and the robotics club. He will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Shane Duffy. Proud parents, Joe and Gina. His academic honors include, he is a University of Albany 1844 Scholarship Award recipient, as well as the, a member of the National Honor Society and the National Business Honor Society. His extracurricular activities include, he was a member of the varsity winner track team, as well as varsity badminton team. He will be attending the University of Albany Honors College Program in the fall. Emily and Gordon, proud parents, Russ and Florence. Her academic honors include, she is an AP Scholar with Honors. She received an academic scholarship from Dickinson College, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Varsity Tennis Fencing Team, as well as the Vice President of the Ambassadors Club. She will be attending Dickinson College in the fall. April Farrell, proud parents, Bill and Barbara. Her academic honors include, she is a member of the National Honor Society. She is a Minds in Motion Scholar Athlete Award recipient, as well as attaining high honor roll. Her extracurricular activities include, she is the treasurer of the Ambassadors Club, she is assistant to the board of the National Honor Society, as well as a member of the World Language Honor Society. She will be attending Penn State University in the fall. Garrison Farrell, proud parents, Scott and Michelle. His academic honors include, he is an LIU Excellence Award winner, as well as attaining high honor roll. His extracurricular activities are, he is a Suffolk County Police Department Youth Academy member, as well as a volunteer at Last Hope Animal Rescue and Comset State Park. He will be attending Royal University Post in the fall. Joseph Fiola, proud parents, James and Anne Marie. His academic honors include, he is an Army ROTC Scholarship Award recipient. He is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as a Minds in Motion Scholar Athlete Award recipient. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the varsity wrestling team, as well as a youth wrestling volunteer. He will be attending Virginia Tech in the fall. Sean Finnick, proud parents, Robert and Carol Ann. His academic honors include, he attained high honor roll as well as student of month in math. His extracurricular activities include, he, he enjoys creative writing and is an online group organizer. He will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall.
Kristen Finnerty. Proud parents, Robert and Linda. Her academic honors include, she is a Sutton Academic Scholarship and Cook's Honors, Pro, uh, honors College Scholarship Award recipient. She is a Jack Frost Racing Association Scholarship Award recipient, as well as an NCAA Division II Athletic Soccer Scholarship Award recipient. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the National Premier Soccer and Lacrosse programs. She is also a member of the National Honor Society, as well as the National English Honor Society. Kristen will be attending Indiana University of Pennsylvania in the fall. Madison Fulcher. Proud parents, Matthew and Monica. Her academic honors include, she is an ACT SAT Scholar Award recipient. She attained high honor roll as well as student of the month. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Girls Leader Organization, and a member of the National Honor Society, as well as the Ambassador Club. She will be attending the University of South Carolina in the fall. Jana Gardner. Proud parents, Stephen and Diana. Her academic honors include, she is a Loyola University Dean Scholarship Award recipient, she is also a member of the National Honor Society, as well as the Theater Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the varsity gymnastics team, chorale, and women's choir. She will be attending Loyola University in the fall. Gabrielle Girard. Proud parents, Greg and Lisa. Her academic honors include, she is a National Merit Scholarship Commended Student. She is an AP Scholar with distinction, as well as a DECA Suffolk County Award winner. Her extracurricular activities include, she is, she is a member of the vars Varsity Cross Country team. She is Vice President of Finance for the DECA team, as well as Treasurer for Math Leagues. She will be attending Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the fall. Cassidy Gadici, proud parents, Chris and Stacy. Her academic honors include, she is a University of Delaware Academic Scholarship Award recipient. She is a Suffolk County Cheerleading Coaches Association Scholarship Award recipient, as well as a Minds in Motion Scholar Athlete Award winner. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the varsity cheerleading team as its captain. She is a member of the National Honor Society as well as an all Long Island second cheerleading team member. She will be attending the University of De Delaware Division I cheerleading in the fall. Gabrielle Gadici, proud parent Glenn. Her academic honors include, she is a President's Excellence Award recipient for Sacred Heart University. She has also received a Performing Arts Scholarship from Sacred Heart University. She is also a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a Fusion Dance Force competition team member, she is a member of the Interact Club, as well as the Ambassador Club. She will be attending Sacred Heart University in the fall. Colby Goldsmith, proud parents, Edward and Christy. His academic honors include, he is an AP Scholar with Honors, as well as a member of the National English Honor Society and the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular excuse, his extracurricular activities include, he is the Senior Class President, he is a nominee and attendee of the American Legion Auxiliary Boys State, as well as a Rotary Youth Leadership Association member. He will be attending UC San Diego in the fall.
Lauren Gotard. Proud parents, David and Stephanie. Her academic honors include, she is a Columbia Silver Crown Award winner for Xanadu. She attained New York State Seal of Biliteracy, as well as a Scholar Athlete for the fall of 2019. Her extracurricular activities include, she is first chair alto saxophonist for Pitt and Jazz Band. She is vice president of the World Language Honor Society, as well as chief editor for Xanadu. She will be attending Boston University or Columbia, but she currently is undecided. You can think of two worst places. Right. <laughs> Emma Graff. Proud parents, Craig and Jennifer. Her academic honors include, she is a Hofstra University Presidential Scholarship Award recipient. She is an AP scholar, as well as ACT SAT scholar. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the varsity tennis team, she is a member of the varsity badminton team, as well as girls leaders organization. She will be attending Hofstra University Honors College in the fall. Chris Grillo, proud parents Stephen and Natalie. His academic honors include, he is an AP scholar with honors, he is a virtual enterprise ele elevator pitch finalist in 2020, as well as a Minds in Motion Scholar Athlete Award recipient. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the DECA team, the varsity volleyball team, as well as varsity track. He will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Ethan Hale, proud parents Robert and Allison. His academic honors include, he is an AP scholar, he is also a Suffolk County Legislative Distinguished Youth Award recipient and is a member of the National Honor Society. His extracurricular, his, extracur his extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the tra his travel ice hockey team. He is a legislative assistant, uh, member of uh, an intern in, as a, for a legislative assistant, as well as a cooperating contributing writer for the sports section. He will be attending the University of Florida in the fall. Brianna Hansen. Proud parents, Ryan and Josephine. Her academic honors include, she is an AP scholar with distinction, an ACT SAT scholar, as well as a award winner for a national French contest. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the National Honor Society, the World Language Honor Society, and DECA team. She will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Gretel Huber. Proud parents, Edgar and Christina. Her academic honors include, she is an AP Scholar with Honors, a member of the National Art Honor Society, as well as the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory intern. She is also a BAE Systems Women in Technology Program, um, and as well as a senior class officer. She will be attending UC Berkeley in the fall. Jake Iacino, proud parents John and Nancy. His academic honors include, he's a member of the National Honor Society as a board member. He is a member of the World Language Honor Society as well as attaining high honor roll. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the Pre-Law Club as well as assisting in club recruitment for the Walt Whitman High School Club Fair. He will be attending Farmingdale State College in the fall. Kate Jenkins. Proud parents, John and Erica. Her academic honors include, she is an ACT SAT scholar. She is a Tri-M Music Honor Society member, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is chief editor for the high school yearbook, she is Vice President of the tri Music Honor Society, as well as Captain of the Varsity Field Hockey Team. She will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. 
Jillian Jobson. Proud parents, Tim and Lucienne. Her academic honors include, she is a member of the National Honor Society, the National English Honor Society, and World Language Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the varsity field hockey team, chamber orchestra, and ambassadors club. She will be attending the University of Albany at, in the fall. Priya Katwala, proud parents Sunil and Darshna. Her academic honors include, she is an American Legion Auxiliary Empires Girl State Scholar. She is also a Suffolk County Legislator Gold Distinguished Youth Award recipient and is a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Girls Varsity Winter and Spring Tech Track as its captain. She is also a Kiwanis Club member of Huntington and is a member of the Ambassadors Club. She will be attending Quinnipiac University in the fall. Bridget Kenny, proud parents, Matthew and Anne Elizabeth. Her academic honors include, she is a member of the National Honor Society, she achieved Student of the Month in Spanish and Art, and is a St. LaSalle Honor Society Manhattan College Award recipient. Her extracurricular activities include, she is an ESCO Secretary and Officer, she is a member of the Varsity Tennis and Badminton Team, as well as a member of the Girls Leaders Organization. She will be attending Seton Hall University in the fall. Dana Kohler, proud parents, Paul and Lisa. Her academic honors include, she is a University of Buffalo Dean's Scholarship Award recipient. She is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as attaining high honor roll. Her extracurricular activities include, she is captain of the varsity swim team. She also is a team Suffolk County Swim Club member and is co-leader of the Curvy Girls Scoliosis Support Group. She will be attending the University at Buffalo in the fall. Adil Khan, proud parents Israr and Sadia. His academic honors include, he is an AP scholar, he is an ACT SAT scholar, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the National English Honor Society, he was, he was a volunteer of Week of Code, as well as a member of the WIT podcast. He will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall. Sydney Khan, proud parents, Sean and Katerina. Her academic honors include, she is a Suffolk Zone Chapter Award recipient. She is vice president of the National Honor Society, as well as the President's Volunteer Gold Service Award recipient. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Varsity Soccer Team, All League Soccer Award, and Wildcat Hero. She is a member of Junior Volunteer at Huntington Hospital, as well as First Seed Varsity Badminton Starter. She will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Andrew Kim, proud parents, Wu and Hannah, his academic honors include, he is a member of the World Language Honor Society, as well as Achieving Student of the Month. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the robotics team, he is a co-leader of the refuge, as well as a member of the varsity tennis team. He will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall. Nicholas King, proud parents, Alan and Patricia, his academic honors include, he is an LIU Post-Academic Scholarship Award recipient. He is a member of the National Business Honor Society, as well as attaining Student of the Month. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the Video Yearbook as its editor. He is a member of the National Honor Society and played JV football in lacrosse. He will be attending LIU Post in the fall. Olivia Conjugal, proud parents, Peter and Jennifer. Her academic honors include, she attained the New York State Seal of Biliteracy. She is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as achieving high honor roll. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the World Language Honor Society and is a summer camp counselor. She will be attending Liberty University in the fall.
Daniel Kulesa, proud parents, Greg and Tara. His academic honors include, he is an AP scholar, he is an ACT SAT scholar award recipient, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the varsity golf team, as well as the WIT podcast. He will be attending Ohio State University in the fall. Jake Lang, proud parents, Stephen and Jennifer. His academic honors include, he is a DECA, a DECA Regional, Regionals Award winner, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the DECA team, as well as achieving high honor roll. He will be attending Hofstra University in the fall. Juliana Lacona. Proud parents, Hugo and Beatrice. Her academic honors include, she is a University of Delaware Presidential Scholarship Award recipient. She is a gold award winner for National Spanish Exam, as well as attaining high honor roll. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the varsity fencing team, the marching band, and pit orchestra. She will be attending the University of Delaware in the fall. Debbie Lopez, proud parents of Dustin and Fatima. Her academic honors include, she is a Hofstra University's Dean's Scholarship Award recipient. She attained high honor roll as well as student of the month in world language. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a volunteer translator for the school as well as a member of the intramural soccer team. She will be attending Hofstra University in the fall. Aiden Lubker, proud parent Christina. His academic honors include, he is a Stony Brook University Presidential Scholarship Award recipient. He is a National Merit Scholarship commended student, as well as an ACT SAT scholar. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the Science Bowl team, the Mathletes team, and the Varsity Fencing team. He will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall. Caitlin Lupton, proud parents, Lewis and Lisa. Her academic honors include, she is a New York State English Council Publication Award recipient. She is a Go Eight Expedition Art League, Art League of Long Island Award winner, as well as an award winner in a national French contest. Her extracurricular activities include, she is president of the National Art Honor Society. She is a board member of the Nas National Art Honor Society, as well as a member of the collective. She will be attending Suffolk County Community, Community College in the fall. Kevin Martin. Proud parents, James and Diane. His academic honors include, he is a member of the National Business Honor Society, the National Honor Society, and achieved the Physics STEM Fair Award. His extracurricular activities include, he is captain of the varsity cross country team, as well as the winter track and field and spring track and field. He will be attending Sacred Heart University in the fall. Marissa Martino, proud parents, David and Donna. Her academic honors include, she is a Springfield College Trustee Scholarship Award recipient. She is also a member of the National Honor Society, as well as the World Language Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is captain of the varsity girls soccer team, she is a member of the girls leaders organization, as well as ambassadors club. She will be attending Springfield College in the fall. Ryan Meyer. Proud parents, Jason and Judalyn. Jason and Judalyn. His academic honors include, he is an academic scholarship award recipient as well as attaining high honor roll. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the coding club as well as an annual performer at Xanadu concert. He will be attending Farmingdale State College in the fall.
Tyler Meyer, proud parent, Melissa. His academic honors include, he is an East End Financial Fire Department Scholarship Award recipient. He is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as the World Language Honor Society. His extracurricular activities include, he is president of the Robotics Club, he is a field major for the Walt Women High School Marching Band, as well as a member of the Walt Women High School Jazz Band. He will be attending University of Delaware in the fall. Katie Miata, proud parents, Stephen and Kathleen. Her academic honors include, she is a National Merit Scholarship Commended Student. She is a Summit County Distinguished Youth Gold Award recipient, as well as a Bronze and Gold Presidential Volunteer Service Award recipient. Her extracurricular activities include, she is president of the Chamber Orchestra and Tri-M Music Honor Society. She is captain and all-league award recipient of the Varsity Tennis Team, as well as an all-county award recipient for the Varsity Badminton Team. She will be attending Georgetown University in the fall. Brady Mondry, proud parents, Mark and Christine. His academic honors include he is a Stony Brook University Presidential Scholarship Award recipient. He is a National Merit Scholarship Commended Student, as well as admitted to the Honors College at Stony Brook University. His extracurricular activities include he is a member of the Varsity Fencing Team, the National Honor Society, and Xanadu Literary, Literary Magazine. He will be attending Stony Brook University Honors College in the fall. Jimmy Morales, proud parents, Jose and Maria. His academic honors include, he is an AP scholar. He is a Connecticut College of Chain Scholarship Award recipient, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. His extracurricular activities include, he is an all-division volleyball player. He was the captain of the Varsity Boys volleyball team, as well as an e &L mentor. He will be attending Connecticut College in the fall. Josh Mullers, proud parents, Brian and Rebecca. Josh's academic honors include, he is a Steinhardt Music Talent Scholarship Award recipient. He is the president of the Theater Honor Society, as well as attaining high honor roll. His extracurricular activities include, he has been in many center stage musicals and drama productions, as well as a member of the Walt Whitman High School Marching Band. He will be attending NYU Steinhardt in the fall. Emily Murphy, proud parents, Craig and Michelle. Her academic honors include, she attained the New York State Seal of Biliteracy. She graduated in the top 10% of the class of 2020, top 10 of the class of 2020, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is the executive lead editor of the yearbook. She is a mentor and tutor through Long Island Youth Mentoring, as well as competitive dancer at North Shore Dance. She will be attending Boston College Lynch School of Education in the fall. Sarah Mace, proud parents, Charles and Julie. Her academic honors include, she is a Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute medalist. She is an ACT, SAT scholar, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she attained the Girl Scout Gold Award. She is president of the Walt Women High School Lamp Ladders Club, as well as goalkeeper for the varsity field hockey team. She will be attending Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in the fall. Alina Nasir, proud parents, Ahmad and Anna. Her academic honors include, she is an AP scholar with distinction. She is a member of the National Honor Society as well as attaining a silver award for the National Spanish Exam. Her extracurricular activities include, she is president of the Speech and Debate Club, she is a junior volunteer at Huntington Hospital, as well as the podcast producer for The Wit. She will be attending New York University in the fall. I was just trying to get your water. All right. <laughs> Anna 
Newton. Proud parents, Thomas and Nicole. Her academic honors include, she is a Stony Brook University Presidential Scholarship Award recipient. She is a member of the Stony Brook University WISE program, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is the secretary of the National Art Honor Society, as well as the founder of the Digital Arts Club. She is also an executive board member for Teen Advisory Board. She will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall. Eleni Papakayovu. Proud parents, Jack and Anjali. Her academic honors include, she is an NYIT Theodore K. Steele Scholarship Award recipient. She is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as the National Business Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Collective, the SAG Club, and French Choir. She will be attending New York Institute of Technology, Manhattan, in the fall. Jennifer Parada, proud parent, Jose and Velma. Her academic honors include, she is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as attaining high honor roll. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Walt Whitman High School Marching Band, the Ambassadors Club, and Color Guard. She will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall. Sabrina Patrizzo, proud parents, Felice and Grace. Her academic honors include, she is a member of the National Art Honor Society, as well as the World Language Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a member of the Tri-CYA Young Leaders and attains Student of the Month in Science. She will be attending Farmingdale State College in the fall. Tyler Failey. Proud parents, Timothy and Nancy. His academic honors include, he is an AP Scholar with Honors, as well as a Long Island Scholar Artist Award recipient. He is also a member of the National Honors Society. Tyler's extracurricular activities include, he is on the competitive dance team, a member of the student government, and is a member of the International Thespian Society. He will be attending Northeastern University in the fall. Connor Rangel, proud parents, David and Eileen. His academic honors include, he is a member of the National Honor Society, he is a volleyball all-county academic elite award recipient, as well as a nominee and attendee of the American Legion Auxiliary Boys State. His extracurricular activities include, he is a, he's a member of the varsity badminton team, he is on student government, as well as a member of the National Business Honor Society. He will be attending Binghamton University PWC Scholars Program in the fall. Nicole Rabaculo. Proud parents, Anthony and Carla. Her academic honors include, she is a member of the National Honor Society, the World Language Honor Society, and the National English Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is secretary of the Girls Leaders Organization, she is secretary of the Robotics Club, as well as being a member of the Ambassadors Club. She will be attending Marist College in the fall. Michaela Ritazzi, proud parents, William and Mary Ellen. Her academic honors include, she is an AP scholar, as well as a member of the Triad Music Honor Society and National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she was a member of the varsity cheerleading team, as well as varsity badminton team. She will be attending Hofstra University in the fall. Lauren Redelman, proud parents, Jeff and Nancy. Her academic honors include, she is a Fordham Tuition Award winner. She is also an ACT SAT scholar and is a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a Girl, Girl Scout Gold Award recipient. She was a member of the varsity cross country team and was vice president of the pre-law club. She will be attending Fordham University in the fall. Amanda Ria, proud parents, Jeffrey and Karen. Her academic honors include, 
She is a member of the National Honor Society, the ACT SAT, she is an ACT SAT scholar, as well as a Minds on the March Scholar Award recipient. Her extracurricular activities include, she was a member of the Walt Whitman High School Marching Band, the Decca Team, as well as Pitt Orchestra for School Musicals. She will be attending Quinnipiac University in the fall. Emily Ria, proud parents, Jeffrey and Karen. Her academic honors include, she is a member of the National Honor Society, she is an ACT SAT scholar, as well as a Minds on the March Scholar Award recipient. Her extracurricular activities include, she is, was a member of the Walt Women High School Marching Band, the DECA team, as well as Pitt Orchestra for School Musicals. She will be attending University of Delaware in the fall. Lily Robert, proud parent Tina. Her academic honors include, she is a National Merit Scholarship commended student, as well as an ACT SAT scholar. She is also a Suffolk County Field Hockey All Division Award recipient. Her extracurricular activities include, she was captain of the girls varsity fencing team, she was a member of the girls varsity field hockey team, and was a Walt Whitman High School office runner and veterinary assistant. She will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Sebastian Rosa. Proud parents Alejandro and Laura. His academic honors include, he is a Stony Brook Honors Program Award recipient. He is a member of the National Honor Society as well as the Castle Honors Program. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of the National English Honor Society the Theater Honor Society, and attained high honor roll. He will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall. Stephanie Ross, proud parents Frederick and Lori. Her academic honors include, she is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as a Long Island Science Congress Awards recipient. She is also an AXA Community Service Scholarship recipient, her extracurricular activities include, she was a member of the girls' softball team, she was in Girl Scouts, as well as a member of the Interact Club. She will be attending Stevens Institute of Technology in the fall. Kayla Sakayan, proud parents, Ara and Lena. Her academic honors include, she is an AP Scholar with Honors. She is also a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a Huntington Hospital Junior Volunteer Surgical Liaison. She is captain of the Girls Varsity Tennis Team, as well as editor-in-chief of the Whitman Paw Print. She will be attending UCLA in the fall. Paola Salinas Limas, proud parents Cesar and Erica. Her academic honors include, she was a gold award winner for a national friendship contest, as well as a silver award winner for a national friendship contest. She also attained high honor roll. Her extracurricular activities include, she was in the Ambassadors Club. She will be attending Farmingdale State College in the fall. Dominic Sarabella, proud parents, Dominic and Ora. His academic honors include, he attained high honor roll, and his extracurricular activities is he was a member of the varsity cross country team, as well as winter track team. He will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall. Noel Schwatner. Proud parents, Dennis and Christina. His academic honors include, he is a Minds in Motion Scholar Athlete Award recipient, as well as a member of the National Honor Society and attained high honor roll. His extracurricular activities include, he was the executive lead editor for the video yearbook, as well as a member of the Whitman Varsity Lacrosse team. He will be attending University at Albany in the fall. Umima Siddiqui, proud parents, Jamil and Afshan. Her academic honors include, 
She is an ACT SAT scholar. She is also a Suffolk County Legislative Distinguished Youth Award recipient, as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include she is a member of the Mathletes, as well as a SAD club officer. She will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall. Logan Slansky, proud parents, Adam and Alyssa. His academic honors include, he is a University of Delaware Distinguished Health Scholarship Award recipient. He is a National Merit Scholarship commended student, as well as a Temple University Presidential Scholar Award recipient. His extracurricular activities include, he was the marching band drum major, he was the ultimate Frisbee intramural founder, as well as a tri and Music Honor Society member as its co-president. He will be attending the University of Delaware Distinguished Scholars Program in the fall. Fiona Smith. Proud parents, John and Trish. Her academic honors include, she is an AP Scholar with Distinction, as well as an ACT SAT Scholar. She also was a Student Leadership Award recipient. Her extracurricular activities include, she was the treasurer of the senior class government, as well as a member of the varsity girls soccer team and National Honor Society. She will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Mary Tresky, proud parent Thomas. Her academic honors include, she is an AP scholar with honors. She is an academic all county for section 11 soccer as well as a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she was a member of the Varsity World Soccer Team and the Varsity Lacrosse Team, as well as a member of Girls Leader Leaders Organization. She will be attending the University of Miami in the fall. Luke Towers. Proud parents Daniel and Lisa, his academic honors include, he is a member of the National Honor Society, as well as a member of the National Business Honor Society, and attains Student of the Month for math. His extracurricular activities include, he is a Huntington First Aid Squad Junior EMT, he is a St. Catherine's Hospital Emergency Room Volunteer, as well as an NYU Winthrop Hospital Surgical Floor Volunteer. He will be attending Stony Brook University in the fall. Barbara Trippi, proud parents, Perry and Mary. Her academic honors include, she is an RJ Fellows Honors Program Award recipient, as well as a Muhlenberg College Dean Scholarship Award recipient. She is also a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is a Huntington Interfaith Homeless Initiative Volunteer. She is a member of the St. Elizabeth's Youth Group and plays travel and school softball. She will be attending Muhlenberg College in the fall. Emma Tui, proud parents, Doug and Kristen. Her academic honors include, she is a Geneseo Merit Scholarship Award recipient. She is a member of the National Honor Society as well as National English Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include, she is the historian for the Ambassadors Club. She is a member of the Pitt Orchestra, as well as a member of the World Language Honor Society. She will be attending SUNY Geneseo in the fall. Riley Turner. Proud parents, Matt and Martha. Her academic honors include, she is a Syracuse University Honors Program Award recipient, as well as a Syracuse University 1870 Scholarship recipient. She is also a member of the National English Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include competitive dance and is a member of the French Honor Society. She will be attending Syracuse University Honors Program in the fall. Natalie Ugenti, proud parents, Vito and Kathleen. Her academic honors include, she is the president of the National Honor Society, she attained first place in the Huntington Chamber of Commerce DECA event, as well as attained the President's Volunteer Gold Service Award. Her extracurricular activities include, she is the Vice President of DECA, 
She's a member of the varsity badminton team, as well as president of the Interact Club. She will be attending Bucknell University in the fall. Marlon Vasquez, proud parent, Jose and Delmi. His academic honors include, he is a National Technical Honor Society member. He has also attained high honor roll and student of the month. His extracurricular activities include, he is a member of Skills USA as well as a graphic artist. He will be attending Farmingdale State College in the fall. Christopher Williams, proud parents, Chris and Maria. His academic honors include, he is an AP Scholar with Honors. He is also a Minds in Motion Scholar Athlete Award recipient and a member of the National Honor Society. His extracurricular activities are is that he was a member of the varsity track and field team. He is a member of the National Business Honor Society as well as World Language Honor Society. He will be attending University at Albany in the fall. Connor Williams. Proud parents Glenn and Sandra. His academic honors include he is an NYIT Steel Scholarship Award recipient. He has also attained high honor roll. His extracurricular activities include he is the vice president of the Ethics Club. He will be attending New York Institute of Technology in the fall. Kevin Robel. Proud parents, John and Terry. His academic honors include he is a member of the National Honor Society as well as National Business Honor Society and is a Minds in Motion Scholar Athlete Award recipient. His extracurricular activities are he was a member of the varsity cross country team, the varsity winter track team, as well as varsity bowling team. He will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Melanie Yodis, proud parents, Christopher and Mary Ellen. Her academic honors include, she is a member of the National Honor Society as well as attaining high honor roll. Her extracurricular activities include, she was a member of the Wind Ensemble and she will be attending Pace University in the fall. Elliot Yoon, proud parents, Brenda and Brandon and Kate. His academic honors include, he was an AP Scholar with Distinction, he was a member of the National Honor Society, as well as a Suffolk County Math League Recognition, Recognition Award recipient. His extracurricular activities include, he was a member of the Coding Club, Math Leagues, and achieved Master Rank in the Game of Go. He will be attending Boston College in the fall. Sapana Zafar, proud parents Kamal and Sabrine. Her academic honors include, she was recognized as an emerging leader in environmental health from the Econ School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. He, she was a member of the National Honor Society as well as receiving honorable mention from the National French Contest. Her extracurricular activities include, she was vice president of the Girls Leaders Organization. She was named a change maker at the One World Girl Third Annual International Women's Day Dinner, and has received a citation from Senator Anna Kaplan for community service. She will be attending St. John's University in the fall. Jackson Zay, proud parents, Michael and Maureen. His academic honors include, he was a 2020 Suffolk Zone Award recipient, he achieved academic all-county for volleyball, as well as attaining high honor roll. His extracurricular activities include, he was a member of the varsity lacrosse team, the varsity volleyball team, as well as varsity bowling. He will be attending Binghamton University in the fall. Just one moment. Okay. Yep.
we just want to announce it. So, yeah. We'll be in one second. We're just, we're just putting in, we're just putting back up the slideshow. Yeah, I think you should be good. Yep. All right. Sorry for the interruption. Jordan Campanelli. Proud parents, Mark and Wendy. Her academic honors include she is a Syracuse University School of Education Leadership Scholar Award recipient, as well as an ACT SAT scholar and a member of the National Honor Society. Her extracurricular activities include she is the historian of the Ambassadors Club, as well as a member of the Interact Club. She will be attending Syracuse University in the fall. Jeremy Foreman. Proud parents David and Kirsten. His academic honors include, he is a Temple University Presidential Scholars Program Award recipient. He is a National Merit Scholarship Commended student as well as achieving top 10 for the class of Whitman in 2020. His extracurricular activities include, he was a member of the varsity winter and spring track, as well as the executive co-president for DECA. He is also a member of the National Honor Society. He will be attending Temple University in the fall. We're just loading our last two. Stephen Hong. Proud parents, Ben and Yin. We'd like to announce him as the Walt Whitman High School Class of 2020 Salutatorian. He is an AP Scholar with Distinction, as well as a National Merit Scholarship Commended Student. His extracurricular activities include he is a member of the varsity badminton team, as well as the president of the SAG club. He is also secretary of math leads. He will be attending Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the fall. And last but certainly not least, Stephen Verderame. Proud parents, Stephen and Deborah. He is Walt Whitman High School's Class of 2020 valedictorian. He is an AP Scholar with Distinction. He is also a member of the National Honor Society. His extracurricular activities include, he is president of the Coding Club. He is an NICA Long Island Hurricanes Mountain Bike Racing Team member, as well as a Klein Trail Ambassador. He will be attending Cornell University in the fall. So I'd like to end this off before I give it so back to Dr. Bernardo and Mr. Ciapetta. It has been a pleasure being able to know these over 120 students. Um, to give perspective, uh, we started only five years ago with 70. To have 120, almost double the amount of students that are attaining and doing so many successful things here at Walt Whitman High School has been wonderful. It's been a pleasure to know each and every one of these students, and I look forward to hearing about them in the years to come with their college experiences. Thank you, Dr. Bernardo and Mr. Ciapetta, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share, share these wonderful accolades of our fantastic students here at Walt Whitman High School. Great job, John. Thank you, Mr. Murphy, fantastic job, and uh, congratulations once again to all of our students. And 
terrific accomplishments by our students, great schools that they're going to. Very, very, very proud of them. Um, you did a great job reading uh, all their names. There were some very difficult names there. <laughs> you did it perfectly. I'm not sure how much you care. Yes. <laughs> all right, we're ready to move into our business portion of our meeting. I just do want to get back. There was one question that was posed before we began the presentation on the budget. Um, with a question posed for a resident and asking, can we elaborate on why pension costs are going up? That uh, is an estimate that pension costs will go up for uh, the following years. So this year's budget, we think you know, we're okay with where we are, but we're expecting a big rise in pension costs for next year's budget. Pension costs are often a lag indicator, and they're based exclusively on the performance of the stock market given the trouble that the stock market had as a result of the pandemic uh, in the last couple of months, uh, we expect uh, a big increase in that. There always seems to be a bigger lag. Uh, we can have 10 great years in the stock market, and then the pension costs go down minimally, and then one okay or bad year, and they go back up dramatically. So we're expecting it. It's not affecting the 2021 budget. We expect it to impact the following budget. Hopefully that answers your question. If it did not, or you need additional information, uh, please feel free to email us and we'll get your additional information. Once again, it's doe at shufsd.org. Okay. We will move on to the business portion of our meeting. I'll take a motion to adopt the agenda. Ms. Carey, seconded by Mr. Bronson, Mr. Nickowitz, and Ms. DiCatano. Any questions on the agenda? All in favor? All opposed? We put their volume back on, I think we can. <laughs> no. There we go. <laughs> Item C to rep, the minutes and bills require one resolution for adoption. Do a motion to discuss? Ms. Carey, seconded by? Seconded by Mr. Nicholas, Mr. Joyner, Ms. DiGitano, and Mr. Bronson. Any questions on item C through F? Is there about uh, value back on the way? Or? Okay. All, right. All in favor? All opposed? All right. What are we talking about? Moving on to new business. New business item number one is the approval of a change order for the Performing Arts Center. Motion to discuss. Ms. Carey, seconded by Mr. Joyner. Uh, Dr. Dillia, would you like to tell us about the change order? Sure. Uh, while we were renovating the pack, we had some unforeseen circumstances on the stage, some wood needs to be replaced. Uh, we did have to take the ceiling, the remainder of it. Um, so basically, that required a uh, change order. At this point, we're pretty much near completion of that. And a change order, for those watching at home, is a, a change from the original budget awarded the contract amount, and it could be plus or minus. In this case, it happens to be plus. Does the board have any questions on the change order? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Change order is adopted. Item number two is the approval of attendance at the summer law conference. Motion to discuss. Ms. Carey, seconded by Mr. Bronson. This is for three board members' petition to, uh, to the permission to attend the summer law conference, which will be done virtually this year. Any questions? All in favor? Any, any opposed? All right. Next is summer law conference. Yes, uh, summer law conference on. Uh, Five uh, seven twenty one. And who's who's slated to go right now? Uh, you are myself and Miss Bronson. Okay. Yep. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Next item is the approval of the scholarship. Motion to discuss. Miss Carey, second by Mr. Bronson. This is the Joseph and Elaine Purcell scholarship. It is a one-time scholarship in the amount of $500 for a student performing college-level education. There is no GPA requirement. 
but the students have has to demonstrate a negative impact due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Item number four is the approval of the seeker for our energy performance contract motion to discuss. Ms. Carey, seconded by Mr. Joyner. All right, so this is a motion to a uh, resolution to approve the seeker, which is the State Environmental Quality Review Act in connection with our proposed energy performance contract, which will be voting on in the next resolution. The energy performance contract is something that we've discussed at various board <coughs> meetings. It is a way for us to be able to do uh, some needed construction work at no cost to the residents. We offset the cost of the construction by energy savings. Board, any questions on the secret? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> and that resolution for those at home declares the energy performance contract to be a type two action, which means there's no further review required under secret. Okay, moving on to item number, item number five, approval of the energy performance contract with Johnson Controls, motion to discuss. Ms. Carey, seconded by Either second. Second by Mrs. Nikowitz, Ms. Nikitano, and Mr. Cronson. Dr. Dillia, would you like to tell us a little bit more about the performance contract? Sure. This is basically putting us to the finish line here with the contract, um, with some solar arrays, some lighting savings, a lot of energy cost efficient savings, which will also generate a positive cash flow by the end of the contract. And we're looking forward to our approval. Yep. Board of any questions? Had uh, two facilities committee presentations on this, and one committee, uh, one presentation to the full board. Anything further before we go? Okay. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number six are the recommendations for placement of the students by the committee on special education. Dates listed in February, March, April, May and the Committee on Preschool Special Education, dates listed in March, April, and May. Motion to discuss. Mr. Nicholas, seconded by Mr. Joyner. Any questions on the placements? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Next item is not a resolution. It is a discussion regarding grad plans for graduation 2020. Uh, as you know, this is a difficult issue facing every district, not only in New York State, but throughout the country, actually had to hold a graduation this year. Um, you know, we've had a lot of discussions, you know, observations of what other districts are doing. Uh, Dr. Gardner, would you like to discuss uh, the options for the board? Absolutely. I, um, there are, well, there are limited options, and one of the things that we were we would recommend as you know mr murphy is um working towards uh, an electronic virtual backup plan graduation and i, and I want to say that clearly because our hope and our prayer is that in july and um you know third week of july is eight weeks away so um i, I want everyone to know that you know we really think about it so our hope would be that if we were to um, to reserve, let's say, the weekend of July 25th, 26th, and 27th, that three day block somewhere in there, depending on that. And I make that an extensive recommendation because we don't know what, what we'll be allowed to do by then. So if it's something where we can do a half a student group or three quarters of a student group, you really want to reserve the time. I'm not trying to be evasive, just saying let's leave ourselves the best opportunity for success when variables may change. In eight weeks, I wouldn't push it. I wouldn't recommend pushing it past the third week or well, July twenty fifth weekend, because now some colleges are starting to go back early. No one seems to be going back earlier than the first week in August. Um, so that certainly would be safe in terms of that. And what it allows us to do, if we were to push the graduation date to for an in person chance, in person chance at whatever the best we're allowed to do to July 25th, 27th, and in the meantime, 
uh, Mr. Murphy has had the students in, and he started to record them and do some virtual things. Um, with the hope that that virtual thing is simply a keepsake on the weekend of the 25th, 26th, 27th, we can have our ceremony as a nice keepsake that no other class has ever gotten of a virtual ceremony. Um, and, and God forbid, but it is a possibility that we're not allowed to do anything by the 25th, 26th, 27th, and then the electronic ceremony would be played at that time and given at that time. So, um, no loss in doing it now and having it ready. I hope it's just a souvenir um, of what could be the most possible ceremony, 25th, 26th, 27th, but I can't make that guarantee, so my recommendation would be to give ourselves the best hope at that time, and we can reconvene and then decide what we're going to do. So we've been deciding at this point to postpone the date? Or? Right. At this point, what I'd be asking the board's blessing in doing is deciding to um, postpone the date my recommendation would be, and I know John concurs, I say mine, but John really has the best pulse of the high school, and I always know that. John and I have talked about this. Our recommendation would be the weekend of the 25th, 26th, 27th, somewhere in that blanket of time, so we can kind of give ourselves the flexibility, postpone it now, continue to put together the dynamics of a really nice virtual ceremony, which we hope is a keepsake, but could always then, if we're not allowed to do anything else by the third week in July, would have to suffice. Thoughts from the board? Okay. I mean, I, I defer to, I mean, this is always a, this is a big issue for everybody, but we have, we have people on the board of children who are graduating this year, and I defer to their judgment. Alan Larley. So. Having a little trouble hearing you guys, but I, I think we just gotta wait and see. I mean, we have to make the call right this second. The only call we're making now is to wait until July 25th, 26th, 27th, and see what we can do. Yeah, that's you know, right, right, right now. I, I, I don't think we can. I mean, right. The best we got. I can't really hear you guys all that well, but I think. Are there other schools on Long Island having graduations? Does anybody know if that's the case? No one's having in-person graduation because they're not allowed by law right now. So right. people are having drive-by things and get out of your car and get back in your car, all different things. But nobody's having a graduation as we know it now. So I would at this point just wait and see. I mean, Laura, what are you saying? Let's wait and see. I'm very optimistic. I can't really hear him, but I'm very optimistic. Michelle, I can't hear him. Laura says wait also. Okay. Did you hear Michelle? What did you say, AJ? <laughs> Laura says wait also. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's, I don't think there's a, a decision being made. It's a decision being made. Well, just to say, the only decision we're making would be to, we are saying that we would Postponed, right? Well, yeah, only because I don't know what we'd have if we didn't postpone. Yeah, I so couldn't we, give you any. Going yeah. to say that would have bring the delay the graduation that would have occurred at the end of June to a later day if possible. I think that's correct. Yeah, because I think we know by the end of June it's not a possibility. So we're open to the idea of a graduation occurring during summer. And not just saying, well, June is taxed and we just close the doors. We're agreeing to open the door open. Yes, well put. I'm just here for that. Mm. Good summer. Good. Thank you, Andrew, because I didn't hear what they were saying and I heard you perfectly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to show you. Makes sense, Ms. Lee Pamela? I didn't hear what you said, Nick. Makes sense. It's so good to get near that. Okay. I think we agree. I think she agreed. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. So we have a consensus then. All right. Uh, not a formal vote, so we don't need a uh, resolution. On to personnel. Personnel item 11. Schedules 2, 6, 11, and 16. Motion to discuss. Ms. Carey, seconded by Mr. Nicholas and Mr. Bronson. Any questions on the personnel? All in favor? 
Any opposed? Okay. Information and reports are listed. Future meetings, we have one meeting left in the year right now, and that would be the June 17th meeting, at which we anticipate adopting whatever the results, or certifying the results of the budget. We will also be celebrating and recognizing our newly minted tenured teachers and administrators, recognizing our retirees, and also recognition for our military-bound students. And the first meeting of the new year would be on July 7th. Comments by board members? No comments. Voice of the residents. Ms. McLean, anyone else? Okay. Thank you for your patience. And no one else? And with that, we will take a motion to adjourn. It is carried. Second by Mr. Joyner and Mr. Nicholas. Thank Ross. you for your patience to everyone with the sound. All in favor? Any opposed?